So before we get started with the painting, I'm going to share with you some of the materials that I love to work with when I use gouache. For, so for the first material that I enjoy using is handmade paper. So you don't have to have handmade paper, but this is just my opinion. I think that it works so beautifully with gouache, and so it's like my go-to type of paper that I like to use when I'm painting with gouache paint. So this paper is actually called Hanji paper. I got it when I was in Korea. It was like at an art shop in Seoul, and I found this paper and I thought the texture was so beautiful. And it works really well with gouache. I've painted with this before in some of my previous videos. And I'm going to be using it again today to paint this floral arrangement that I have here. And so before I like to start any painting, I usually go in with like a rough sketch of what I want it to look like. And so as you can see here, I have some like flower outline of a flower arrangement that I saw on Pinterest that I'm going to be using. Next, we're going to go into the palettes that I like to use when I'm working with gouache paint. Here we have a ceramic plate. It was handmade. I got it from, uh, where was I? It was in North Carolina. Where was I? I was in Raleigh. Okay, now I remember. I was in Raleigh. I got this handmade plate. It's not used for really painting or anything like that, but I really wanted to use it because I thought that the texture was beautiful and the coloring, and I really enjoy using ceramic plates whenever I'm working with gouache just because I think that it mixes so beautifully and I'm not really sure if there's like actual fact of like it's better to use ceramic for mixing or whatnot but I think for me personally I just love using it so here I have another ceramic plate that I'm using it's also handmade and I got this one from Korea when I was in Sokcho it was handmade by a ceramicist artist and I just fell in love with the color it's like this nice pale yellow color and I think it just really mixes well with all the gouache paints that I love using. So we're gonna be using that. Ooh. So the next thing, of course, we need is water. So I like to have two cups of water, usually one for a light, when I'm mixing lighter colors and one when I'm mixing for darker colors, just so that it doesn't get super muddy or um, over mixed when I'm like mixing the paints and everything. I think it really helps with keeping the colors saturated and vibrant and how I would like it to be. So I'm just going to move this paper over here so I can show you my paint. So here we have my gouache and watercolor paint box. It has all the paints that I love to use when I'm painting. So at the bottom I have all my gouache paints. So here we have this M. Graham & Co. Artist Gouache. It's in the color Zinc White. I love using this. This is definitely a staple for me. I use it all the time, and which is why I have a larger version of this gouache paint, just because I use white to mix a lot for making lighter colors. Oh, that just fell. The next one, next brand that I really enjoy using for gouache paints is this Winsor & Newton gouache, and this is in the color ultramarine. Ultramarine is another uh, color that I really enjoy using because it's this blue primary color and it's great for mixing and creating other colors with. And then next, another brand that I love using is this Holbein Artist Squash. And this one is in the color Flame Red. It is very different from the Holbein acrylic gouache because that is made with acrylic paint versus this one it doesn't have acrylic in it. So the difference between acrylic and gouache is the fact that when acrylic dries you can't add any more water to it and it just stays permanent like that versus with gouache it will look opaque and have the appearance of acrylic sometimes but it is still water soluble so you can still mix colors even after it's dried by adding more water to it. So this is the difference between the two uh, Holbein Artist Gouache. And we're just going to go into some of the colors that I really enjoy using when I paint gouache. So I just showed you two of um, some of my favorites that I like to use because they're within the primary color palette. Here's the next one. As you can see, I've pretty much used up this whole entire thing. It's this yellow color called... Uh, primary yellow. It's all like crushed up over here because I've been using so much of it. And this is also in the Holbein Artist Gouache brand. And this is great also for mixing colors just because it's a primary color and it's great for creating different colors. So like I can mix the ultramarine with the primary yellow to create green and adding white to make it a lighter green, etc. 
And then another one I love using is the cypress green. It makes a really beautiful um, turquoise color when I add like this the white gouache paint to it. And I just I just love it. It's just so beautifully vibrant and pigmented. And then we have this one. This one's like a favorite, recent favorite in the past year. It's called Smalt Blue. And it's this beautiful blue color. It like really reminds me of the color periwinkle which is sort of a combination of blue and lavenders together and so it's like an in-between of like the purple and blue but not too much of either and i just i just love this color so i really enjoy using that and we're going to be using this quite a bit today also can't forget this washcloth that i like to use for when i'm going in between mixing colors so i can dab off a bit of that wet brush to not make it super watery just great for like uh holding in taking out any of the excess water that i'll usually have on my brush so i really like using this all right so now we're just gonna go in and start painting which is the best part of this process so what i usually like to do when i paint with gouache is starting with the lightest color so I'll go in and pour some white in. Add a little dollop of that. And then next, I'm gonna go in and work with the pink color. There's like a pink flower right here that I'm going to start off with. So I'll go in with this brilliant pink color. So I'm just gonna add some of that here. You only need a little, cause a little will go a long way. So I actually like to go in and use this opera color. It's like this beautiful bright pink color and it's actually a watercolor and it's by the same brand Holbein uh, that I use with like the artist gouache type, but it really enhances the color. So I'm just gonna use this to add to the pink to make it even brighter. And then we're gonna go in with this yellow. So I'm gonna go in with this other yellow that I really like to use called lemon yellow. And this one's like a brighter yellow than the primary color yellow. I don't know if you can see a difference. They kind of look the same on camera. But this lemon yellow is a little bit of a brighter color, which I want for this uh, pink flower. All right, so now we're going to start mixing. I'm going to pick out my brushes. Oh, I didn't, share, I didn't share the brushes with you. Let me go in and share the brushes that I love using first. So the brushes that I really enjoy using are all in here in this ceramic brush holder that I made back in college that I am not super proud of but it hold it does the job well of holding my brushes so I'm going to show you some of my favorite brushes let's see I can find them there's so many in here all right so these are basically the fav like my go-to brushes that I love using again I got these in Korea this is probably like one of the best brushes I've ever used. Like I'm not even exaggerating. They're just so amazing. They just hold the paint so well and they paint, they just like works so well with both gouache and watercolor whenever I use them. And I just really like the feel of it too. Like it's like a really nice smooth wood. So it's really nice to hold and to paint with. And the brand is called, oh, it kind of got washed off. Well, I think it's like H-W-A-H-O-N-G. That's how you spell it. Hopefully you can see it. I think it got kind of scraped off a bit when I've been using it a lot. Oh, here you go. You can see it. So these are the brushes that I absolutely love using and we're going to be using right now. All right, so I'm going to go in with this larger brush and it's in the size 45. And we're going to go in and paint this flower right here. And it's a, like a nice little peachy pink flower. So as you can see here, I automatically already went in and wetted my brush, which is really important for starting out with this type of gouache, is that you want to keep your brush wet. So the amount of water you use when you're dipping in your brush will determine how opaque your gouache will be. And for this one, I don't want it to be super uh, watery. I want it to be pretty opaque for it for this piece. So I'm gonna go in and wet my brush, but I'm gonna just dab a lot of that water out. I'm gonna go in again and do the same thing. All right, so I'm gonna start first with my white. I'm gonna grab a bit of my white, mix it over here, and then I'm gonna grab a bit of that pink, a little bit of the opera 
watercolor pink. And I'm going to go in with the yellow. So I'm just going to keep mixing these colors until I get to the color consistency and vibrancy that I want. I can go in with more water as well to mix. So you can see I like to use a lot of white when I'm going bright with my colors. Alright, I think this is the color that I'm wanting. I'm just going to add a little bit more pink to that. Alright, so we have a nice peachy pink color. So now we're just going to go in and paint this flower. As you can see here, the color is looking really nice and opaque here on the paper and also the texture is just, I just love, just love the texture of handmade paper and gouache. So now I'm going to let that dry. I kind of moved this situation here so it's easier for me to paint. I'm going to go in and paint the next couple pink flowers and then we'll move on to the next color after that. I'm gonna go in with the next shade of pink. And so it's these flowers right here. They're a bit of a more darker pink. So we're gonna go in with that. And I'm gonna continue to be using the same, these same colors here, but just going in a little bit darker. So with layering colors specifically, you want to make sure that your paint is dry, so that the gouache paint is dry, and then you can go in with layers. I recommend not going in with a lot of water on your brush, just because since gouache is water soluble, it will reactivate and it'll probably get all smudged with the other colors you're trying to add on to it. So make sure it's dry, make sure your brush is not too wet, that it's almost almost dry just like uh, keep your brush nice and damp and when you're uh, layering other colors on top of the color that you're doing so here I am going to go in later and layer and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that in a bit after I put down the base colors first so we're going to go in and paint this this flower just got a little more white all right so we're going to go in here And then we're going to go and do the other colors. All right, now I just put down the base color for the pink flowers that I just painted. And we're just going to go in and start painting the greens, uh, the foil, fo fully, wow, foliage of the floral arrangement. So the color I'm going to use for that. I'm going to use this cypress green color and then we're going to use this blue color as well because blue and yellow make green but i also like using this green color because this specific green is a really bright almost phthalo color green and so it has like a bit of a bluish undertone so when i'm a, like a light blue almost turquoise undertone so when i use that with the yellow it creates a really beautiful bright yellow as you'll be able to see here so i'm going to go in and mix that so you can see this is like super bright 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 green almost chartreuse like a chartreuse green color so I'm gonna add a little bit white to just make it a little bit more muted because white actually helps to make it more pastel looking um, when you add white to other colors it creates a more softer light color so we're gonna go in with this green and highlight the places that have this brighter green color from the picture I'm looking at. So we're gonna do that. And 
as you can see, I'm using more water to create more of the paint here because when you reactivate the paint with water, it'll become much more, you'll get more paint out of it. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and fill in the rest of the green colors here, and then we'll be back to do some of the blue and purple flowers. here I'll probably be adding more as I'm continuing to layer in this painting I did make a little mistake though because here I forgot about the <laughs> that I'm gonna be painting these like lavender blue flowers on here and then I already painted like the green on top of here but no worries because painting is quite forgiving at times I guess depending on the type of paint you use but with gouache it can be quite forgiving at times because you can just layer on top so just but make it really opaque so not super watery but keep your paint nice and pigmented and so we're just going to go in and uh, cover that up and then we'll go back in again and cut and have the little green uh, what's it called they're not really leaves but like the plant the green part of this flower plant uh, we'll go on top of that later once the lavender blue color dries so for this color i'm going to use my one of my favorite blue colors smalt blue the most pleasing color in my opinion so we're going to use a little bit of that and we have some more white that we're going to use So to create a nice lavender color, we're gonna mix the small blue with some white and then a little bit of that opera pink. So you're gonna use a lot of white. I think this is the color that I want. So we're gonna go in here and paint this flower. And then later we're gonna go back and put the green into the plant again or the plant flower flowers are plants um <laughs> we're gonna go back in and put the green on top of the lavender once it dries so we're gonna go in and paint all the blue lavender colors and then we'll come back and continue layering All right, so we have basically the whole base of the painting finished, and we're gonna start with the layering process now, which is also one of my favorite parts of painting with gouache. But first, I'm gonna take out these waters because they look in kind of muddy, although this one's like a nice blue, but we're gonna be using some more colors that aren't blue. <laughs> and so we're gonna get some fresh water and then I'll come back and show you how I like to layer my paints. All right, I got myself some fresh water to use for our mixing. And now we're gonna start with the layering process. So first and foremost, the most important thing is that your paint is dry because if it's not dry, it's gonna bleed and it's just gonna be a mess. But then that's okay because you just have to wait to dry, for it to dry again and then you can go in and layer on top and make it really opaque. So. This is the way that I really enjoy using gouache. I think there's a lot of different techniques of how you can go about using gouache 
and creating whatever texture works best for you, but I really enjoy gouache making it opaque and have the appearance of acrylic, but have the consistency that is what makes gouache gouache. So what we're gonna do now, uh, my paint is pretty much already dried, as you can see here. So we're gonna go in and start the layering process. And I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush for that because that's sort of the part where it has more detail work. So I'm gonna go in with the pink flowers first. So I'm gonna wet my brush a bit, but I'm gonna make sure that this isn't super wet and that it's like damp, but not, yeah, like not too watery basically. You want it to have the nice flow of mixing with the water because when you, as you can see here, the paint is already dried in some parts here, but once I add in water, it'll like reactivate as you can see right here which is the really cool thing about gouache, it's how it reactivates with water, just like how watercolor is. All right, I'm gonna add some more white here because I'm going to add some lighter colors of this pink flower. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna be using a lot more of this gouache as you can see, I have quite a bit of paint on my brush, and we're going to use that to layer on top. So we have here, I'm going to outline the flower. As you can see, it's quite opaque, which is exactly what I'm going for with this gouache. And this is basically what I'm going to do for the rest of this painting, this gouache painting. So I'll do a little time-lapse video to show you how I create the rest of this painting. layering gave some more definition and shadow and depth to the flowers that I really enjoy and of course this handmade paper I just love it you can see the beautiful texture that the gouache has with the hanji paper this was a very like opaque technique that I just use all the time whenever I paint with gouache. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any more questions or if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can leave a comment down below. That is it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.